just wait wait for a minute Sir, sir, you are speaking, sir. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Actually, no, sorry, I did not turn on the meet. Yes, but okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so I repeat. It's so last class. We discussed here and application of biotech. Is okay. Now can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, application in application agriculture. So, we discussed two important things: BT cotton. How the BT cotton is produced? BT BT means bacillus thuringiensis. So this is a bacteria that have produced a gene called the Cray gene. That Cray gene is for one defense. That gene is used to uh, as a best pesticide, no, that means they introduced in the plant, and the plant pests are killed by the gene. So how the mode of actions we all discussed? Eh? The cry gene gives cry protein. It's a crystalline protein. This protein, when ingested, it becomes soluble in the midgut region and makes the pores of the epithelial cells and causes the lysis, splitting of the cells. So that causes death of the the insect, insect bowl worm, corn bowl worms, these are the corn worm. So these are the uh, pests easily can be controlled by using this Bt toxin. So no need of applying pesticide in this method. So similarly, nematode resistant tobacco plants also we discussed that is based on the RNA silencing or RNA interference. That method that is used there is known as RNA interference technology. Then in applications, medicines, so we discussed the uh, last class genetically engineered insulin genetically engineered insulin and uh, today we'll be discussing gene therapy and the uh, molecular diagnosis genetically engineered insulin so this is uh, the diagram the picture so we uh, discussed it detail in the last chapter last chapter so principles and the tools of biotech um, so this is uh, the process so this process is known as a splicing. You know, splicing occurs. Splicing means the exon to be joined, introns to be removed. Because the prokaryotes, because we are going to use this gene in the prokaryotes. Prokaryotes, there is no splicing at all. These are produced directly in the cytoplasm. Okay, so that the gene is uh, introduced in the plasmid and using the ligase, it is joined and the transformant, the RDNA is inserted in the host. So this RDNA is inserted 
uh, in the host here, this is the inner one. So the host is known as a transformant. The host to be multiplied and uh, multiply means keeping the fermenters produce insulin. So this insulin is obtained is known as a humulin or human insulin. And it is obtained by our DNA technology. And uh, the, the insulin is having the part which is known as a two short chain. Two short chains are there. You can see the blue color one, the green color one is given in the top. And here also you can see the blue and the green color. And these are the actual the, the functional part of the insulin. But in human, it is produced in the form of a premature insulin, not functional, not mature insulin. It is known as a pro-insulin. The pro-insulin is produced. The pro-insulin is having three parts. One is a, this blue color one is a A chain, it's known as A chain. And the, the dark color one, gray color one here is a B chain, a C, C peptide. It's peptide means C chain only, C peptide. And the green one is a B peptide. So A and B to be joined. That is actually functional insulin gene. And the pro-insulin is A chain is having 21 amino acids. If you want to know that amino acid sequence, it is made up of 21 amino acid. It may come for the need only, 21. This uh, C peptide is made up of 33 amino acids. It is bigger, 33 amino acids. And uh, uh, sorry, the C peptide. And B chain, B chain, the green color one chain is made up of 30 amino acids. So 30 amino acids is a polypeptide chain, finally. Yeah? So then this C peptide to be removed, connecting peptide, C for connecting, connecting peptide to be removed. After removing, these two are added with the sulfur. So they add sulfur, then the disulfide bond will be formed between these two strands. And this is a functional insulin. This is a mature insulin or functional insulin. This is produced and C peptide is removed. This processing is needed. So when you prepare, the processing is needed. But uh, to overcome this, the another sign is Eli Lilly, you know, in America, pharmaceutical company, Eli Lilly company, 83. They prepared two separate genes, A genes separate and B genes separately inserted in the plasmid. And uh, the, exactly, you know, A chain is produced and B chain is produced from the gene, A and B. So there, if you keep the whole insulin gene, it is made up of around the, uh, insulin is 51 amino acid. 21 A chain, 30 B chain, plus 33 C peptide also added. So that will be produced. So if you keep an insulin gene as it is as a one, if you break into two like A gene and B gene, like you no know, A chain, B chain will be produced. So that will be easy. So no need of cutting the C peptide. C peptide is an unwanted one, extra stretch of the amino acid peptide chain, you no, know, that to be removed. That processing is not needed. So A will the A chain and B chains are directly obtained and using sulfur. If you add in sulfur, then the, the bonds are formed, the disulfide bond between them that is used. So this up to here we discussed it last class. This is known as a humulin. Like that so many products are formed there. Eh? Not only insulin, so there are so many products also formed the eh? growth hormone, stomatostatin, streptokinase and the edible vaccines. So, uh, so many other uh, the products also formed by using this method. Next one is the gene therapy. So in the gene therapy, what is even the picture shows something fault gene is there, like, uh, uh, like engineers uh, remove, genetic engineers, they remove the faulty genes and they replace the correct genes. So like that, like in a faulty, like in an ornament, in a faulty something is a stone is very faulty or missed, then we can replace it. So in the DNA, the particular sequence is nothing but the gene, that the faulty gene is removed and the new gene can be inserted. So this way, this all can be effective only in the embryonic stage, in the early stage, maybe in the sperm or a gamete or uh, other things. It is very effective. Because you know, from the gamete, single cell stage, if you target, if you do this therapy, it will be functional, fully functional. Otherwise, you know, it will, maybe we have to continuously you have to uh, undergo for this gene therapy after a certain period of time. So we cannot change all the cells once the multicellular organism is formed. Or certain stage of the embryo, we can do, pluripotent stage, you know, we can do. So this is a gene therapy. One of the one or two examples we'll discuss under this. So what is this, the method of, to correct the gene to eliminate the defective genes. So it is a method to correct the gene defect in a child or embryo. So in the, it is, this will be embryo will be more effective. The genes are inserted into the person cells or tissues to treat hereditary disease. So to complete for the non-functional genes, to compensate for the non-functional genes. 
non functional gene is removed and the new gene is inserted so faulty gene is removed so it's repairing only gene repairing like washing machine repairing means repair the genes correct the genes faulty genes removed and add the new genes it can be done by different uh, using different vectors the first clinical trial first gene therapy was uh, given to the four years old girl four years old girl and the so first gene therapy is given and uh, she was suffering from adenosine d aminase uh, deficiency adenosine d aminase deficiency so adenosine d aminase is a very important enzyme very important enzyme this enzyme is used to convert the lymphocytes so, so lymphocyte into beta cells uh, or uh, b cells and t cells you know the b cells and t cells are produced by this method b cells and t cells are produced from the uh, pluripotent stem cells bone marrow cells the bone marrow cells are the one which produce all the wbc or bc so from the bone marrow cells uh, so particular cells will convert into will produce the b cells uh, bone marrow lymphocyte a thymus uh, uh, originated lymphocyte thymus lymphocyte t cells and b cells are produced to convert the stem cells of bone marrow into b cells and t cells we need a particular enzyme the particular enzyme is known as adenosine d aminase so what is the role of adenosine d aminase so this is a one which convert the stem cells into b cells or t cells so if this enzyme is not there what happen uh, stem cells are there okay stem cells are there stem cells are in the bone marrow you know the uh, in, in uh, most of the animals what is that bone marrow is the one is a source of uh, uh, formation of blood cells all the blood cells be it wbc rbc platelets this all formed from the bone marrow bone marrow is known as a hemopoietic hemopoietic cells hemopoiesis that means origin of a blood from the bone marrow so bone marrow is a source of the b cells or uh, all the blood cells or bc wbc so the stem cells will be there in the bone marrow these stem cells need to be mature divide to form a the specific cells the wbc or bc to convert the, the cells stem cells into b cells and t cells we need a particular enzyme that enzyme is adenosine d aminase this enzyme is deficient that person will not have the b cells and t cells b cells and t cell is not there normally what happen and these are the very important cells which involves in the cell mediated immunity and the humoral immunity so both the things cell mediated immunity means directly fighting okay b cells directly fighting and uh, and uh, humoral immunity means producing antibodies humor means the plasma produce antibody so these things completely won't be there so this person will suffer from so many other infections unable to control total immune system is lost no b cells no t cells uh, protection so that is the uh, the uh, loss of adenosine d aminase now if it, the enzyme is the gene is not there the enzyme will not be produced this enzyme is at the uh, ada ada enzyme is not produced b cell t cells not produced so that that particular person will severely suffer from uh, immune related disorders no this is called as a scid scid means severe combined immunodeficiency severe con combined immunodeficiency it's very severe form of immunodeficiency basic cells itself not there so it is caused due to the the deletion of gene for the animals any mutation or any reason is a genetic disease like hemophilia like sickle cell anemia so these are the genetic disease faulty gene the gene is deleted the gene is deleted the enzyme for the ada is not produced so the enzyme for the immune system to function is not happened so what can be done the treatment by bone marrow transplantation the bone marrow is actually stem cells you know stem cells will live longer it's pluripotent it can produce the uh, rbc wbc like that you know blood is originated from the cells bone marrow cells are known as the cells stem cells it can multiply is not you know, transform into rbc wbc so these are going to transform for each, for each conversion we need particular enzyme some particular uh, stimulant is needed like that so the bone marrow transplantation will be very effective but bone marrow transplantation is not very easy okay so it is a very inside the bone no cut and then transplant the bone marrow so that is the only solution or another solution is enzyme replacement therapy so that particular person has to be injected ada every time the ada has to be go everywhere deep into the the bone marrow 
the enzyme you know they need to because the bone marrow only the cells which produce the uh, uh, b cells and the t cells so the enzyme is needed in that place so uh, you have to uh, inject ada often so that also uh, is not completely accurate you method often daily we need daily doses it's not easy you know we can have to postpone okay death or something you know you can give the disease temporary this method either bone marrow transplantation if you do the bone marrow transplantation stem cells have certain durations only not in one day two day it is a longer time after that we need to again transplant again uh, you have to undergo for the bone marrow transplantation it's not a permanent cure actually in the bone cells and stem bone cells are all exhausted then what happened so again you have to transfuse the, uh, the bone marrow again so this is not permanent cure there another method come up that is known as a gene therapy to cure this disease in this the collect the lymphocyte from the patients you have to collect the lymphocyte so lymphocyte or especially stem cells is much better stem cell can multiply more so collect the lymphocyte and uh, grow in the culture lymphocytes or wbc is taken introduce a functional ada gene so the the faulty gene is removed from this uh, the lymphocytes and uh, the gene is corrected now the new for correct gene is inserted so this is using the rdna technology so removal and then cutting testing and inserting so this all rdna technology using rdna technologies now the repairing is done so repairing is done so they are returned to the patients again so this should be periodically repeated as lymphocytes are not immortal so you see lymphocytes are not immortal but if a lymphocyte duration is okay maybe 15 days two weeks then if it is stem cells more than a few months it will last then it divide and produce the cells after that again you have to go for it still it is not a permanent cure the gene therapy is there but uh, this for effective one if ada gene from the bone marrow cells are introduced in the cells early embryonic stage early embryonic stage now so this can be is a Uh, permanent cure so this uh, this is done in the early embryonic stage is can, can be permanent cure but still this method all uh, temporary methods only gene therapy the same gene therapy is done no in earlier embryonic stage suppose if it, if the if it, the father mother is undergo for the genetic counseling then they test uh, the the ada gene is defective then what happen now so who's uh, father or mother who's ada gene is defective then they, they, the sperm or egg can be corrected so in cell stage itself uh, the sperm or egg can be corrected if it is a person is hemophilia the father is hemophilic then what happen the hemophilic gene is corrected and then the sperm is allowed to fertilize they have the one baby but the, without hemophilia so that is the things is given in the last so the, in the early embryonic stage so the, because al also the early embryonic stage also will be possible because that time it is you no know, it is a few germ layers will be formed the fat is not decided still now after that it become this pluripotent stage early embryonic stage itself it can be corrected the cells which you forms uh, the blood cells so those uh, embryonic stem cells you know can be targeted and corrected itself so then the embryonic stem cells only going to multiply in the adult future so this way it can be corrected or in the gametic stage is much better in the sperm or egg or zygote this stage if it is corrected then no problem it is a permanent no permanent cure no problem at all so this way the gene therapy is done. the defective gene is changed in the early stage so that is a adenosine deaminase so adenosine deaminase is what is the fun functions you should know no it is a enzyme it is used to convert the, the stem cells which is uh, forming the wbc to form beta b cells and the t cells for formation of b cells and t cells the enzyme is needed this enzyme is not there b cells t cells won't be produced the total immune system is shut down total immune system is lost that is a no cell mediate immunity also no humoral immunity so that person is severely uh, um, prone to disease any disease any infection can come so uh, because immune system is lost even aids also like that only aids also cause a uh, severe acute immune deficiency the immune deficiency is down by killing the t cells no so the immune system is down so any infection opportunistic infection that is known as a opportunistic infection any infection come so that uh, you know that body cannot control fight against uh, the infections so that in this way it occurs this is known as a uh, the severe combined immuno deficiency sometimes question will come s c i d you can see in the last it is given now so below the red color one below the picture so gene therapy for ada ada is a adenosine deaminase deficiency 
of a particular enzyme it is a kind of a severe combined immunodeficiency so severe it is a very severe form of immunodeficiency the cells only uh, producing the b cells and t cells because of the enzymes lack so in this picture what is the, the t cells are taken or lymphocytes are taken any lymphocytes are taken the lymphocytes are added with the this, this gene faulty gene is removed in place the area gene is taken defective gene is removed and then new gene is inserted inserting using the host any host or vector or a retrovirus anything can be used for inserting the gene after inserting the gene now the gene is now this is the functional no, normal ada gene the cell with the normal ada gene that is again transfer in transfer into the if it is stem cells it is better stem cells you can transfer into bone marrow stem cells live longer okay it's not permanent but uh, so they live longer it divide 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 for certain period of time so that is better in this this way we can do the gene therapy method for permanent cure you have to target on early embryonic stage so this is ada and next one is uh, application is known as a molecular diagnosis molecular diagnosis so any doubt in this ada any doubt anybody any any doubt in ada simple form so ada what is ada no, adenosine deaminase enzyme required for formation of the blood cells immune system depend on blood cells especially b cells t cells B lymphocyte, T lymphocytes. So the, both the cells won't be produced in the case of the enzyme is not there. So imagine that our body, you know, we need every one enzyme, single enzyme is there. How much a problem is there? How much we cannot uh, tolerate? By birth also so many defects, genetic defect. We are not responsible for that also. So when the body is born with, you know, completely perfect, all right, and uh, we have to, you know, it, we, we, there's nothing to worry. So we see that something is not there, no, that we ask, we torture the parents to buy, to get this, that, all unwanted things, you know. Imagine the people, the girl, four years old girl here, you know, undergone the therapy, gene therapy. So what she has done, you no, know, but she has not done anything, but she, uh, you know, had to suffer. So like this, so born is a, is a healthy body without any disease, you no, know, perfect body is a great uh, gift, actually. So we should not uh, know the, to ask the torture the parents or something. These are not small, simple things we have to ignore. Just uh, have a healthy life is very important. And some people, what they do you know, now, the generations, you know, they spoil the health in a different way. They are born very healthy, perfectly, no disease, no nothing, no genetic defect, but forcibly, you know. So, so many you know, drugs, uh, alcohols, and so many smoking, other bad habits, and they spoil the health. Actually, the people should not do this one. So these are the things we have to think about it. So so many people are born with a genetic defect. You no, know, it's not curable at all. So very pathetic, you no, know, to that life cycle. Right. So we have to think about that. So small things so we can compromise, we can just uh, satisfy you know, these things. And then molecular diagnosis. Second is a molecular diagnosis. So molecular diagnosis means it is a lab testing, diagnosing, uh, diagnosing and uh, testing the the cells or presence of particular antigens mainly the pcr method we discussed no pcr method uh, any any virus enter a yeah, virus is uh, what body recognizes as antigens and what body will produce the body will produce an antibody the antibody and the antigens are highly specific they don't produce randomly so particular antigen is there the particular antibody will be produced by the body so once the antibody is produced the antibody is uh, produced uh, and B cells, no, like antibodies produced. These antibodies remains in our body for some time. So it's called memory cells will be there. Some forms of plasma cells, some form memory cells. Memory cells remain. The first infection, first infection that causes that uh, starting of uh, onset of uh, antibodies will be produced. It takes longer time. First time, it like smallpox. Uh, don't worry, the smallpox once comes, uh, people tell it won't come again. No, so smallpox once comes, uh, the no need of any medicine. Also, uh, normally it takes a few weeks, one or two weeks. It takes body. No, Imm in, 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 immediately it causes uh, fever. No, any any infections, anything comes, uh, any infection, the fever comes. Actually, fever is a good thing. You should not subside immediately. Fever is uh, it's not a disease actually. It's a defense mechanism by the body. The fever comes, you know, is called the, the some it induces a substance called pyrogens. So okay, so the fever is actually uh, increase of body heat. Increase of body heat, the multiplication will not occur. So germs and other things, you no, know, that uh, that won't multiply in the in the, the 
hot conditions so that is where the fever occurs fever is some indicate some problems in the body something some you know, infection is going on fighting the body is fighting like soldiers you now fighting with the enemy some problem is there so that is indicate fever fever is actually good uh, indicate that something it uh, body so we make a automated system that increase the heat and increase the heat the germs cannot it's not suitable for the germs to multiply that is one way to control the multiplication of the germs so like this so the, the virus comes first inside that uh, the, the uh, our wbc recognizes as antigens whatever may be surface protein that is known as antigen antigens are recognized by the particular cells of the wbc then they produce the antibodies so it takes time that's why i said smallpox it will take one week or more than a week time and that completely it is it cure kill it fight again some cells uh, become take a copy that's the evolve event that store in the memory memory cells memory cells the secondary second time the same virus comes immediately the antibody will be produced in the no within within a few hours antibodies will be produced immediately will be killed that is why the second time the small box we won't get second time infection we won't get that depends on the virus strength of the virus you know virulence nature of the virus so similarly the aids virus enter in the body aids also the body recognizes an antigen so aids virus the antigen is gp120 the surface protein no gp120 it is actually masked at the time of joining only it can show so that all we discussed in the disease at the time of uh, t cells no t cells uh, having another antigen that's called cd4 antigen cd4 antigen of the t cells and then this cell when the when the gp gp122 plecoprotein 120 t this antigen joins that time only the unmasked because normally aids virus is one step again you know see that the cover the antigen the blood system our soldiers wbc cannot recognize that. so only that time infection just a second one or two second only it can open so that time the body recognize the antigens then body will produce antibodies so the antibodies are produced in the body and that means the particular antibodies for aids antigen gp120 the particular antibodies are produced then so when they take out the blood they don't check the aids virus actually they check the antigen that is the elisa test the basic is they check the antibodies are there or not in the plasma which is a separated plasma no like the fibrinogen other things called a serum they take the serum sample that normally contains a antigen like a convulsion plasma therapy for covid also they give no antibodies are produced when antibodies are found in the plasma only the plasma is separated or serum we can call it a serum so it is separated and uh, the, the antibodies are present that means the person is infected the aids person how aids positive how they tell if the antibodies for the aids are there in the blood in the plasma then the person is hiv positive so when the antibodies are produced when the antigen is in the body when the antigen comes when antigen is nothing but the the aids virus for example a virus protein surface protein that is known as the antigen so not only virus you need blood other blood cells also if you take a group take the b group the b group that are busy having antigens surface proteins or glycoproteins that is nothing but the antigens so this antigens can be detected presence of uh, anti antigens in the body that antibody body will produce the opposite antibody will be produced the antibody can be measured whether the antibody is there or not so that can be a method of testing one is antigen antibody reaction then other method is pcr method the pcr method is not for actually it is a multiplication only multiplication method for example in the in the normal method uh, virus is injected one aids virus enter in the body okay it enter in the somewhere enter in the somewhere in the hand for example or enter in the through the leg leg for example it is enter some injuries the blood contact is there somewhere it uh, enter you are taking uh, immediately from the blood from the hand so it will not show anything or or the uh, the antibodies no, it takes a long time to produce it because aids virus no there is masked virus enveloped virus they completely seal the antigens antigens not exposed not free the body will not recognize at particular time a conjugation that occurs no, joining transmission time only it can as as post so uh, normally it won't be produced it take longer time or initially it will be produce very less antibody suppose uh, 10 antibodies are produced uh, the, after 3 4 days okay or one week time the person is going for the test they take out the just one ml of blood 
In the one ml of blood, there are 10 antibodies in the body. It's totally distributed in the antibody. The 10 ml of blood may not have so antibody presence because antibodies produce a very small quantity initially. But the, the result source, it is a negative. Why is it? Because antibodies are very less number is produced. But infection is there. Infection is there, but the result source is uh, negative. Why? Because the, the amount of blood they take in one ml does not have any antibodies. But antibodies are in the blood. But it is very less in number. So like that, sometimes it gives a false result. It, you have to wait for some time. Wait for infection to come. So when the more antibodies are produced, so then only the blood sample will show the presence of the antibodies, positive. That is a, the risk is there. And the risk is there. Very less, it won't be effective. Very less antibody. Definitely the test will show positive, will negative only, will not show the presence. So, so that uh, to overcome that, the PCA will be used. PCR will be used. The PCR, the, the technique, even very minute quantity can be multiplied. Minute quantity, very minute quantity also. Only one is there. Sometimes during the test also it will be lost. So sometimes we do the one, take a blood sample, we take a test, 10 tests, we will take one antibody is there. The one antibody will go for one test. That test is basic test, no? That will be eliminated, thrown. That, that antibody will be, only one antibody is there. Under 10 tests, one is the first test, we are pouring one on ML, okay? What happens, so it goes somewhere. So it gets lost. So the result will show negative. So in, to overcome that, very small quantity also, if we take only one DNA, so only one cell is there, one DNA, one antibody is there in the, in the sample, that can be easily detected and then multiplied by PCR technique. So that is why the PCR techniques we discussed earlier. This is also one of the important aspect of the application of biotech in the medicine. DNA technology, DNA fingerprinting, and the PCR technique, polymerase chain reaction, making number of copies. Once number of copies made, then we can analyze for the different uh, disease. That is the PCR technique. Set. Amplification of the gene. The particular gene is taken out, one gene, then it can multiply into thousand billion trillions of copies. We can do any number of tests. Then the so those all discussed already. Then ELISA is a enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. ELISA is a enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. So before the polymerase chain reaction, this all we discussed earlier. And I think no need to explain much on this. PCR reactions. We can skip it. Use of PCR now. So what way the PCR is used to detect HIV suspected person. So it was little bit also there. So normally what happened? No, normal lab test, malaria, typhoid is all. When the infection is more, that time only it can be detected. Infection is more, so it is detected. Okay. Just one minute. Hold on, please. Okay, are you listening? Okay, now, so the use of PCR is a direct HIV suspected AIDS patient. So HIV suspected uh, from small quantity itself, the beginning itself, it can be detected. So you have to go for one or two times for AIDS. It's not one time, it's a confirmation test. Sometimes maybe false result will come two, three times, you know, to, you have to give it for the uh, confirmation. So detect mutation in genes and cancer patient, all, no? any mutation in the genes can be detected because completely the gene can be multiplied. So identity, many other genetic disorder can be identified using PCR. Many more, many more applications are there nowadays. So these are the, uh, the things used. And uh, next is PCR already we discussed, you know, use of application and uh, medical application, ELISA. This is a very important point, uh, ELISA. In the first aid board, only ELISA one point is given, that's it. So this only this much is given, is what is ELISA, where it is used. But mechanisms all we study for the meat. Okay, so ELISA means enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Immunosorbent, so something like, you know, and immuno, immunological related things. That means antibody antigen reaction is used. 
sorbent azide so something like absorbent something is used uh, the the adhesive substance something uh, sub, sub, absorbent using attachment so enzyme linked amino sorbent azide in the in the attachment with antibody something is attached what is that enzyme is attached enzyme antibody complex is used so these are the these are the enzyme is used the enzyme is attached to the antibody antibody is uh, again attached to this antigen the down one is the solid no the well this is called the polystyrene well small well type will micro pipette only used very minute small small like no the, the, there's a plate for example is a petri dish or like this micro pipette micro level micro well the so called polystyrene well is used small small pit is used so actually the method is small pit is used here the well type and this is the base the plate the solid plate where they use no, for the testing and the plate is coated with the antigen that's coated with antigen antigen is gp120 gp120 is uh, aids virus antigen the aids virus antigen is is coated on the surface of this the the plate they may be the pipette or whatever they use it whatever the small test tube they use it this is the container normally it is known as a polystyrene micro well very minute quantity of it that is coated with antigen that is important there are many methods four methods are there direct indirect other methods are there so, so we can do it in many way but this is a simple concept here so what is that it is coated with antigen is coated here and uh, so so for example this is a Uh, yeah. test tube the test tube the bottom okay is coated with the uh, antigen antigen is coated antigen is gp120 aids virus antigen or synthetic antigen also can be same similar to gp120 also can be used but this is to be the similar to aids antigen aids virus antigen there is a gp120 exactly then they add second stage uh, they wash it after that antigen is absorbed excess will be removed and uh, then antibody is added antibody is added means antibody where is antibody is there this is a, they take the 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 patient blood they take out the blood and uh, the blood they segregate the the plasma and they remove the fibrin fibrinogen also then the finally serum is there serum or plasma from the patient that to contain antibody so okay that contains antibody if this uh, serum is added here so this is a small uh, okay container petri dish okay like this then the serum is added second stage the serum is added the serum is added but inside what is there coated with the attached with the, what is it the it's called as a antigen aids antigen gp exactly like a virus it is this source of process of virus it is also produce the same gp120 and glycoprotein 120 antigen is there then uh, the serum if the serum is containing antibody antibody then it will attach because antigen always attach to antibody react agglutination occurs no it tightly bind with the things antigen antibody reaction occurs gp120 is there in the down is coated and the serum is added the serum if it contains antibody the serum there is two conditions the serum is the patient is having antibody or not having antibody If the, the if the person is infected with HIV, what happen? If HIV means that HIV will show the presence of that protein, no surface antigen is GP120. Then body will produce the antibody. In the HIV infected person, the blood having antibody against the GP120 antigen of the AIDS virus. If the person is not infected with HIV, if you apply, nothing will bind. Okay, so this antibody is added. So antibody source of antibody is the person's blood, infected person's blood. They separate it, then the serum is added. If the suppose the serum contain antibody, okay, the antibody is there. So then it will be added. It will be added here. The antibody will attach to the antigen. So now antigen antibody complex is formed. Antigen antibody complex is formed. Then wash it. Wash the plate again. Wash it because already it will be come tight. So then it will not go away. So excess other anti other unnecessary antibodies, unnecessary substances will be removed. Then what they do? Third stage, it is labeled with the uh, enzyme because we don't know directly antibodies attached or not. It won't give any color. We don't give test it. No, it is a very microscopy. We cannot can find. So now we have to know the presence of this antibody. Antibody is there or not? 
another enzyme can easily bind with this already the made the enzyme is there alkaline phosphatase you no know, like some enzymes the enzyme name is like alkaline phosphatase this enzyme is normally used this chromogenic enzyme this, this can change the color with the substrate so and this enzyme is uh, added or you can use separately the enzyme first is antigen then antibody then enzyme or antibody attached to the enzyme directly you can before pouring you no know, before pouring you can use that in the, in the in the serum before adding serum serum itself we can add enzyme this enzyme can easily bind with the antibody this is a special enzyme alkaline phosphatase it can easily bind with the enzyme so either you can use one by one antigen first then antibody second then enzyme third like that or this can be uh, already prepared labeled the reagents antibody is there in the serum and the enzyme is together then you can add it so this antibody easily bind with the antigen if the antigen is there in the bottom it, because it is coated with antigens so then immediately bind so now three things we got three things attached in the chain linked so three things are linked so one thing is the enzyme so that's so enzyme linked immunosorbent assay absorbent no assay so it is complete assay means it is complex a yeah, complex having enzyme and the immuno assay means antigen antibody so these are things down one is a base is a antigen its antigen if the antigen antibody is there antibody will be attached or antibody attached to enzyme will be directly attached so anyway we can do it in this method so now the enzyme is attached then what's the thing excess unwanted things will go only this will be attached with the plate so then you add particular substrate particular substrate for this enzyme so after washing what happened now this still will be binded so three things are binded in line antigen antibody enzyme so three things are bind so totally the three things are bind together so down what is there antigen antibody and the enzymes so the enzymes are linked when you wash it unwanted uh, things will go all the other enzymes the other enzymes should not be there because the, you have to wash it every time when you wash it this enzyme should go other this is the enzyme free enzyme excess enzyme will go excess unwanted things will go otherwise this will show the presence this will react with the substrate that is why you have to wash it so once wash it what happen this all the binded one complex will be there attached to this surface the surface like adsorbent okay then the substrate is added for the particular enzyme it can be of anything so any enzymes can be used the particular substrate is used and the substrate is used the substrate can change the color suppose one change the color one substrate is used uh, that can break into two parts then we can change the color substrate and the indicator also together will be added normally the blue color will be expressed and this is the substrate with the chromogenic substance indicator when the substrate is converted into product so the color changes normally blue color appears in the solution the blue color also can be easily identified by the very minute change in the blue color also can be identified suppose only one antibody is there that can be used in spectrophotometer or colorimeter so by changing seeing the wavelength of the blue color can be identified many methods to identify the intensity if the more antibody is there more blue color will be there that's it so if it is very light blue color only one antibody is there also it is it can easily detected so then change the color the minute change in the color can be identified using colorimeter or spectrophotometer that can be used because we use the substance indicator and then the enzymes and then substrate is there the substrate will be the broken by the enzyme so what is the concept here the substrate can change into product and then change the color so that is a, that's the indicate the presence of the enzyme so because we washed here when you wash here the excess enzyme the free this is the top the free enzymes will go out so attached enzyme only will be there so we still the enzymes are there after washing the enzyme is the, are there that means so color is changed because of the enzyme the enzyme is there still the enzyme is attached to the antibody if antibody is there attached means that there should be antigen so definitely the person is having antigen so so this way we can easily detect so the antibodies presence of antibody can be detected by giving the showing the antigen aids antigen here aids antigen in the laboratory they use the antigen then antibody is attached the antibody presence can be detected by using the enzyme so this all linked to each other so this is called the lhs enzyme linked immuno solvent assay to detect the presence of hiv in the patient
HIV antigen, HIV antibody, and the enzyme to identify whether antigen is there or not. Because after all washing, if there is nothing is there, there is no antibody, no antigen means after washing everything will go out. So this is a this is called as an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. The infection by pathogen can be detected by the presence of antigens. So that is the main concept. The concept is known as an antigen antibody reaction. Antigen antibody reaction. So protein or glycoprotein or any other things. These are the actually antigens. Antigens are protein or glycoprotein in nature. So by detecting the antibody synthesized against the pathogen. So this also either presence of antigen can be detected. Uh, opposite, you take uh, antibody, we give and blood uh, the antigens are there or not, you can find out whether it's virus is there or not, you can find out. But this method is best, uh, no? Antibody can be produced, whether there or not. Because AIDS virus can be one or two, we cannot get the AIDS virus. But the blood having more antibodies will be produced after a certain time. Certain time, um, antibodies will be produced. Uh, so uh, take out the blood and separate the, the plasma serum that contains antibodies. The antibodies react with the antigens. And then antibodies attached to enzyme is much better so that the antibody presence can be easily identified. So this is called as a ELISA test. Okay, only how much time now? So any doubt is there, we'll discuss a small topic next class, is transgenic animals, very small topic genetically modified plants and animals we discuss very small topic you can also go through yourself it is not a nothing is a new things you can just read and then find out so anyhow we'll discuss on this transgenic uh, organism or genetically modified organism transgenic animals we discuss so you need this any doubt in the pcr pcr we discussed the pcr purpose is to amplify the gene that's it but the elisa is a new things for you the new things you can, uh, so only the NCRD this much is given. What is the test for AIDS ELISA? How this works, you know, that I have simplified it. There are many other methods also there, different, different methods to detect the ELISA. So this is uh, all methods showing the same concept. The concept is based on antigen, antibody. So antibody is linked with the enzyme. The enzymes uh, can work functions, now. if this is attached to the antibody, the enzyme can change the substrate into products, uh, so change the color. So normally they use a chromogenic substance, color changing substance. They use to identify the presence of enzyme. The enzyme is present, so they link to antibody is present. So antibody is present means antibody is always attached to antigen. So antigen is there. So this way it can be identified. Any doubt in ELISA and gene therapy, adenosine deaminase. What is ADA and how it is? Any doubt? Any discussion? No, sir. Okay. Shall I ask a question? Danish, what is the use of ADA? What is ADA? What is the use? ADA means? Danish. ADA and use. So many are, uh, uh, I don't know, so they are on, they are not attending. So sometimes I ask you to switch on the video. Just for a minute, one or two minutes. Just to, uh, I can answer the question. Just a few seconds is enough. So whether you are there or not, and then you keep on, switch on the mobile and then, okay. Uh, Nishita. Also, it is important that you should not uh, miss the class. Don't miss the class, don't miss the test, the weekly test. Those who are not attended weekly test, I will say today also you have a weekly test. And if you're not attending, so you're only getting the attendance certificate. Okay, today class, what we do meantime. So Nishita is there. Sir. Okay. What is ADA? And what is the use of ADA? ADA means adenosine DMA. DMA means is okay, DMA enzyme used to convert stem cells into B cells and T cells. 
the B cells and T cells formation, it is needed. If the enzyme is not there, B cell, T cells not there. B cell, T cells not there, immunity is not there. That is known as SCIG, severe combined immunodeficiency. SCIG full form also, you need to note it down. No? Severe combined immunodeficiency occurs. Very severe form of immunity because no origin itself, no, no cells, no soldier at all. No, Then any infections may come. So that it can be treated. Normally, it can be treated two ways, transplantation, um, bone marrow transplantation, but also non-permanent cure. It can use for certain times, again, go for after three months, six months, you know, that depends on the how much bone marrow is transplanted. Bone marrow having stem cells, actually, you know? so stem cells need to be produced. Again, you know, for that original, we cannot compare with that. So the stem cells are transfused or you know, transplanted for certain times only it will work. When the term stem cells are exhausted, again, you have to transplant stem cells. So that is method. Or you can give a adenosine trideaminase enzyme inside injection or anything, you know, inject it. That way, this is also not a permanent cure. So gene therapy will be the, the cure. That also is not in the adult. Adult uh, it not work. Adult also we are targeting the stem cells only. Instead of gene marrow, the, you know, the bone transplantation. So then directly injecting the gene. The stem cells, take out the stem cells and modify the stem cells, alter the stem cells. Repairing is done. Therapy, gene therapy is then. Gene repairing is done. Correct the genes using our DNA technology only. Then the stem cells are kept again in the uh, bone marrow. The same persons, you know, okay, not transplanted from others, same persons, uh, the WBC or lymphocytes or stem cells of lymphocytes are taken and corrected and kept inside. The stem cells keep producing the cells, but not continuously. But they also have certain times only. So that the permanent cure, if you want, then target on the early embryonic stage, either in the early embryonic stage or gametic stage, sperm or egg, so this way. So it is, it is, it is uh, done in stomatic cells, so stomatic cell gene therapy. Germinal cell gene therapy is not uh, much, no, it's allowed, but a somatic cell gene therapy, it is called as a ex vivo method. In vivo means inside the body itself, you can insert it, insert the target host cell, no, DNA vectors insert. Which if, if the RDNA is formed inside, it's called in vivo. Now we are taking out the lymphocytes, no, the stem cells we are taking out the, from the person, the person, taking out and then doing outside. It's called the ex vivo method, if you want to know, the ex vivo, outside to the body. Okay, so these are the things about the. Uh, ADA, then ELISA, is discussed, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, how it is uh, used, it is used to detect the presence of AIDS, uh, any antigen, not only AIDS, any antigens, any antigens, uh, because it is based on antigens, antibody reactions. Indirectly, the antibody presence can be uh, seen by using enzymes attached to the antibodies. So some enzymes can be attached to the antibodies, like alkaline phosphatase like enzyme that can change the color. So by knowing the color, we can see the enzyme is working. Enzyme is working means enzyme is attached to the antibody. So antibody is attached to the antigens. This way, these are linked to each other. That is known as a ELISA. This, this shortly is an antigen antibody reaction. Okay, so today test uh, any other doubt if you have, then you can ask me or you can send me in WhatsApp. Uh, and today test what are the portions? Uh, because this portions biotechnology applications, I don't keep for the term one. Uh, so, so you can take previous uh, chapters, any one chapter or two chapters for revision. Can you tell me any chapters for revision? What chapter can be used uh, for today test? Today test is 40 okay. Any chapters which is not so for revision, so you need a revision. So you can tell me. So I'll take question from that chapter, not from today uh, this uh, topic. This chapter is not for the uh, coming term one exam. Anything? Any idea? So what are the topic? What are the chapters? Any any chapters you can tell me? One or two chapters. Anybody? We have chapter two, sexual reproduction in flowering plant, then human reproduction. Reproductive health, genetics. The third and fourth. Third and fourth, uh, human reproduction and reproductive health. Okay, molecular basis are often repeated you know, many times. Human health disease recently we have done. Uh, microbes also we have done recently. Biotechnology also we have done. Then the sexual reproduction flowering plant, human reproduction, reproductive health. 
So you are ready to write for human reproduction and reproductive health. This is all you together. Is it okay? Chapter three and four. Okay, or, sir. Either chapter three and four or chapter two only. Two in sexual reproduction in flowering plant. A complete chapter. Or uh, human reproduction, and uh, this is uh, fourth chapter is very small. Reproductive health is a very small chapter, so you can always together with the human reproduction. Three and four, okay, then fine. So today test uh, five o'clock, five to five thirty. So I will send the question. I will inform you the time around five to five thirty. Wait, you can ready. Don't uh, absent for the test. You can send the uh, questions neatly, a clear image, and then single. Uh, PDF is there, no? You can just take continuous stretch. You can scan, scan scanner or some other, no? PDF editor is there. You can use it. So take your continuous uh, seat in oh, same direction, clear image. You take and send it. And write. Uh, don't write many pages, no? You can write uh, two, three pages will be enough. Compactly write. One more question, you can write directly one A, two C like that. So I give an answer one, two, three only. Uh, the one, two, three put number again. You write simply one line also will do. You no need to make many pages because of scanning, uploading. Also, it depends you more. So better you write compactly. You can make a line also if you compact. You make a line or whatever maybe. So you can write one or two pages. Easy for loading. You know, for sometimes you have network problems. Uploading it take time. So to avoid that, you can write compact. And uh, one more question. So I need directly now. Question number one, uh, two. Question number two. You can make circle because both are uh, same number numeric only. I don't put A B C. Or you can use A B C also, no problem. But three means you have to use C. So like that also you can use it. Or a number you circle it one. Uh, without circling will be answer. One answer is two. Two answer is four like that. So you can or you put iPhone and write one two. Okay, two four like that. You make it very short. No need to. But exam time what you can do? You can write to the, the options name. Here also if you write options name it is fine. But many places I find that all questions are shuffled. They first start with the three marks. Some start with the two marks. One mark here and there all. No? So many things you have to write properly. So, but the examiner was correcting now. They get annoyed if we see the one question is missed. Uh, after the first first, first uh, three more questions, you written two again. Two more questions again inserted one. Three more questions again five mark changing a lot. No, so these are the presentation is very important. So write neatly. Start with the big question. Sometimes unavoidable. You can start, but uh, in sequence, not um, randomly. So two more questions will be written, two questions missed, and three more questions. Again, you are writing two more questions. It's a lot of confusion will be there. So you can write in sequence. Uh, everybody try to write. At least it is a, it's a practice. Even this, uh, this corona pandemic times, we are giving this much opportunity. The school, you can replace it. Don't miss for the test. One hour, you can sit and write. OK. So chapter three and four for the today test. Thank yes, you. Sir. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.